All right, in the first of these videos, we imported the graphics image, vectorized it, positioned it, and cleaned it up, and got it ready for v-carving. Now we're going to bring in some more elements. We're going to build up a project out of those elements. We're going to use embossing to give it some, some uh, relief in the z-axis. And then after that, we'll go on and uh, start to program the machining order and the machining operations to cut it out. Okay, I've got this geometry that's uh, going to be V-carved, and inside it I want to be uh, dishing it out in an elliptical cross-section to cut into the wood and give me some relief. Inside that I'm going to have an element that's raised back up to the surface of the wood, and it's going to be V-carved. So we start by putting, well actually, before I get into that, I could take this uh, geometry here, this scalloped interior part, and use that as the, uh, the geometry that defines the dish. The reason I don't want to is that just on the other side of that line there's a v-carved groove and that would leave a very uh, fragile piece of wood right there at the top. It would probably get some tear out during the machining. So I want to position an ellipse just inside it. Cancel out of that. Um, I'm about four inches wide by about five and a half inches tall so I'm just going to go to other ellipse. We'll go 4, 5.5, 3, and 3.7. These are these values are a little bit off just to illustrate the changes that you, you're going to have to make to, uh, to get this right. You can see that it's not quite tall enough. The side to side position is good but the uh, the up and down position and the y-axis needs to be changed. I actually know what the, the uh, values need to be because I've played with this before so I'm just going to input the, the uh, exact values that I need. And 3.8 and get the piece of geometry that I really want. I'll go to select, hold down the shift key for change select and trash that small one. You can see that it looks like it's touching there. If you actually zoom in, it's not. Um, it is very close, but there's enough supporting wood around there, and it's just a tiny little bit away that I'm not terribly afraid about to, or afraid of tear out. All right, so that's our second element. One of the things you want to do at this point is start considering how you're going to be selecting and grabbing things. You can use layers and assign each of these elements to a separate layer, but there's another thing that's uh, pretty easy to use. If you select something and go to modify attributes, layer is one of the things you can change it to, but color is another. So in this case, I'm going to first unselect that ellipse, go to modify attributes, color, and change from blue to black. I'm going to do the same thing with the ellipse, modify attributes, color, and change it to a purple. And I'm going to bring in the final element, which I've already got imported and vectorized and cleaned up. Um, it's one that I've, I've carved many times. It's wildly popular. People love it to death. Is a, a Celtic cross. Again, this is originally being done the day before St. Patrick's Day, so I thought I'd keep in with an Irish theme. So I'm going to go ahead and grab said cross, first get rid of that ellipse, which is identical to the one I just drew. I'm uh, going to translate it 20 positive in the x direction, so select, OK. And because it's a demo that I've already practiced, I've, I've brought it exactly where I wanted it to be. I used drag to, uh, to get it into place originally. But once I found it, then I just translated all three of these elements at once, 20 negative x. All right, so now I've got all this nice geometry. I've got it in three different colors. It's easy for me to go up on my top bar to the select, excuse me, once I'm in a select mode, select, pick by color, and grab just the ellipse. Or 
pick by color and grab excuse me just the uh, the border actually I'd already picked the lips uh, but you get the point you can pick one out of you one out of the middle it's hard just using a pick box in fact it's not possible just using a pick box to just get the cross without also getting all these other lines and you don't want that so once you've put things in different colors or layers work just as well in fact they work better in a lot of cases than colors uh, particularly for complex 3d parts you want you want liberal use of layers now we're going to start looking at the embossing strategy that is going to give us this flat board surface with the v-card border the dished out elliptical shape the raised up profile that's going to have the cross on it the face of the cross right back up at the top of the board and a v-carved detail structure inside there so we go back to bob art and we go into emboss model first thing we're going to do is create our stock origin down here at the uh, zero point is fine uh, i'm going to need six and a quarter in the x-axis and seven and three quarters in y so go ahead and input those values seven and three quarters now you can and I'll go with a resolution of 300 that is how many triangles per inch by the way is what resolution means so uh, the higher the number there the finer the mesh that defines all the 3d parts that you're going to make uh, you can stick with straight colors if you want to really differentiate things but if you want to get a, an upfront idea of what things are going to look like go with your texture appearance box here and in this case as with most router guys I'm, I'm uh, working with wood we'll pick a plain sliced red oak and everything looks good hit OK and there is a flat board with some drawing stuff on it so we go back to emboss model and we will go to emboss regular and here's where we'll start working on our dished out shape I want to use an elliptical cross section on this and the uh, the minor axis the short side of this ellipse is about four inches wide from here to the other side so we'll go with half of that at a value of two now you can get your values by dragging the little uh, vertex there oh let me switch to convex ellipse as you can see that changed uh, but it's if you know the values you're looking for it's it's much easier to actually just input those values than to uh, drag that vertex so I want two wide by a half an inch deep I'm going to use a subtractive emboss I don't want a color I want to keep the wood look right now so down here in the lower left no excuse me lower right hand side is actually transparent hit that hit OK now I want to select the geometry hit reselect and choose the inner and the outer geometries actually you know I don't have to on this one uh, excuse me I'm just gonna let this dish all the way across so got that geometry selected go to emboss model hit regenerate and I obviously forgot something and go back here to edit convex ellipse 2.5 subtractive that's what I did did not properly select the uh, the ellipse yeah uh, in select when you do geometry reselect you have to click on it and then uh, confirm by hitting the space bar clicking OK and I failed to do that so anyway there is our dished out shape there's our cross geometry floating on top of it now I want to 
the profile for this cross to come straight back up to the flat surface of the wood. So I need to do another emboss to accomplish that. And because I selected that, let me do a quick regenerate again, just so that everything is happy. All right, that's done. Now on this cross, there's a line in here with a special purpose. This line, let me get select. This line right here is not part of the V-car for this cross. What it is is the profile, the cutout profile of the cross. And the reason it's on the inside of this other line is to save me a little time when I'm finishing these crosses for people. If I do the profile there, but this alley here is V-carved, what happens is the profile is right where the point of the V tool goes through. I get a nice chamfer all the way around the cross built into the machining process and I don't have to sand it on there to, to knock that sharp edge off. So that's just me being lazy. But anyway, we go back to emboss model, we go to emboss regular. Now we've got a little bit of a fancy situation going on here. We're stacking an emboss on top of another emboss. Anytime you do that, you're going to get one of two conditions. It's either going to stick out too high or it's not going to stick out at all. You want to go with the type to manage that. In this case, I want <coughs> excuse me, neither an add nor a subtract. I want a merge high. The profile is just going to be a straight vertical line, so I'll pick line. Height is going to be at the zero. It's going to be the top surface of this board, which is at zero, <coughs> excuse me, in the XY plane. The angle is going to be 90, so that it's straight up and down. Color, I'm going to go ahead and blank that again so that it just shows wood. Everything is set up. Okay, I've got a vertical line. It's going up 90 degrees. It's going to the height zero, which is the top point of this emboss. It's using merge high so that it'll actually project up out of the bottom of this dish part. If you do another emboss over here, you don't have to do that. You can use add or subtract. But if you're stacking an emboss on top of another emboss or crossing an emboss over another emboss, you're going to need to pick merge high or merge low. In this case, merge high is the thing to use. Tell it OK. Now I'm going to select the geometry. Confirm by hitting OK. Now I'm going to regenerate all the embosses. And there we have it. Now at this point, we're about to uh, leave the process of designing this and get into the process of machining it. But again, I have a V-carved border that goes around the outside. I've got a V-carved Celtic cross that goes on the inside. Then I've got this three-dimensional dished out surface with this raised boss in the middle that supports the geometry. In the next video, we're going to go over the machining strategies and the tool pathing to get all this done. Thank you, and we'll see you on the next video.